this last piece is the piece that you're actually going to have to carry out in lab. And I don't know how your brain works, and, and what I find is that some people have brains that work like mine, but some people don't, and that's okay. So here's what you're going to get. You're going to get a control rat. And, and, okay, so hold on a second, because you're going to get a control with testes intact, and you're going to get a control castrate. And what that means, what, what is that control going to be? It means that you're going to have someone, some innocent rat that's going to get <laughs> killed, but that wasn't treated by any hormones. And you are going to measure the size of all of their different glands. So, for example, I'm looking at my paper right here. This is the control rat. You're actually going to get a little packet, and it's going to include control rat in it. And these are the data on control rat. This is intact control rat. The pituitary gland is 12.9 milligrams. That's how big it weighed, how much it weighed, thank you. The thyroid gland is 250 milligrams. Oh, good Lord. Undo. 250. I'm going to stop writing my milligrams because that way you can read my numbers. The adrenal glands are 40 milligrams. All of these are in milligrams unless I say something different. The thymus gland is 475. And this is my control. The testes are, what, 3,200 milligrams? <laughs> I'm not going to make any comment on that. The prostate is 425 milligrams. Those testes are huge. The seminal vesicles, that would be 500. And how about the body? Oh, my Lord, I was like, it's 300. No, please tell me that the testes are not 10 times the size of the entire body weight. Oh, grams, not milligrams. So multiply that by 1,000, and then you have them all in the same units. Figured it out. It's all good. Then you're going to write down the information for the castrate control critter. Are you good so far? All right, then you're going to go take a look at rat number one. You know that it has been treated by some hormone, and your whole goal is to figure out what hormone was it treated by. What, which was, rat number one was treated by hormone number one. What was hormone number one? Knowing that it's one of the six hormones that we just analyzed. All right, so then you're going to collect the data. Again, you're going to have intact and castrate. You're going to have both of them, and I'm just going to show this to you just right off the bat. Your pituitary gland in your intact rat actually decreased in size, and in my castrate rat it was decreased in size, right? Now the next question is, is that significant? Is that, like, really the, like, is that enough of a difference to count or not? And here's the clue on that. 20% difference. Now, in Windyland, my mathly challenged brain thinks of it like this. What's 10% of the pituitary gland? And maybe I would even put this in here that, like, oh, I think I would put this in here. 10% of my, the size of my pituitary gland is going to be 1.29. Do you agree with that? So 20% is going to be, for my pituitary gland, it's going to be 2.58. And I'm, all I did was figure 20% of 2.9, or 12.9. And that is, I just showed you the way I did that in my head, that is 2.58. Now, a 20% difference for my pituitary gland is going to be 2.58 higher or 2.58 lower. So I'm going to tell you right now 
that I'm going to subtract 2.58 from this, 10.90, That's the low end. It has to be at least 10.32 or lower for it to be significant, a significant, because otherwise, I mean, we just looked at dead body parts, and there's a lot of variation in what we can see. Or 10.58, crap, I have to carry, 15, 14 point, 15.48. Please excuse my math if it was not correct. This is my range. If my pituitary gland falls in this range, then it's, there's no change. But look at this. Does this fall in the range? No, this is actually too low. Do you see that? Oh my gosh, how cool. I want to do another one. I love this lab. I hope that this, like, 12-hour walkthrough that I'm doing for you, I'm not going to do it in class, just so you know, so you can go to the library and do it. Here I have my, what did I say, thyroid gland. My thyroid gland is 245 in my intact buddy, and it's 250 in my castrate buddy. And you look at this. I don't even have to do any math. Do you have to do any math? We know that there is no change here, no change. You can use whatever terminology or symbols you need to use. But did you see, did you follow that? You might look at this and be like, oh, my gosh, the thyroid gland decreased in size. But it decreased by 5 milligrams. And to be significant, we'd have to decrease by 50 milligrams just by doing the math, doing that for each one. You might, when you get to class, you might want to set up and, and calculate the ranges for all of them. And then you'll know really easily whether the changes are significant or not. It seems like this is a lot of work, a lot of um, data, a lot of tables to take. And you'll, you can do this in groups, but then we, you'll, you'll see that we had a decrease and a nothing and a blah, blah, blah for all of them. And then you should have enough information to figure out what rat got treated with what hormone. Guaranteed on external brain, I guarantee that I'm going to ask questions about this. I say I guarantee it, but I'm going to have to remember that I guaranteed it. But you get the idea. I think it's important. Also on your quiz this weekend, there will be questions about this. So it's worth our time. And now I'm going to stop so that I can publish this thing, and then you can actually watch it before, yeah, you come to school. I love you.